Hello everyone and welcome to yet another lecture of the Bioinformatics for Schoolers course. In today's lecture, we will be looking at genes. What are they? How are they read? And how to find them? So let's begin. So before we delve into specifics, let's discuss the cellular hierarchy, which is fundamental to understanding the composition of a human body. So we've been all hearing from the previous lectures that a human body contains trillions of cells. And within each cell, each contains a nucleus. Inside the nucleus, you will find chromosomes which house your DNA and a gene which is a segment of DNA is also present within the chromosomes. So understanding this hierarchy is essential to understanding the inner workings of our bodies. So as we all have been looking at it, genes are nothing but stretches of DNA that are the instructions manuals for making proteins which do or tell the body what to do and how to work. So basically, genes are made up of segments of DNA and they determine physical traits, including the color of your eyes, could be your hair being straight or curly, which is why, you know, someone might say that you have your mother's smile because you inherit your genes from your parents. So genes is nothing but considered the basic unit of inheritance. They are passed on from parents to offsprings and contains the information needed to specify physical and biological traits. Most genes, note down that most genes, because not all genes code for specific proteins or segments of proteins, which provide different functions within the body. And after the human genome project was announced and finished, we have now been able to tell that humans have approximately 20,000 to 30,000 protein coding genes. So for example, if there is a purple flower, so there is a flower color gene, which is located on a particular chromosome, which will have its particular DNA sequence which will give rise to a protein via the process of, you know, transcription and translation. That protein will help make pigments and which will eventually give rise to the color purple to the flower. So every trait or every physical entity or every characteristic that we see is in turn coded by a particular gene, which is nothing but a DNA sequence present on our chromosomes. So, there are various functions of a gene. So the first function is encoding proteins to build something in your body. So this can be anything from muscles to bones and cartilage and any other forms for our internal structures. It could also be encoding proteins to help direct the body to do something. This could be anything from the muscle flexing to hair growing. The third function could be encoding proteins that indirectly support bodily functions. This could, you know, be helping the immune system to respond to injury or to assist blood flow through our circulatory systems. And the fourth could be directly influencing our physical characteristics or traits like physical quirks, hair color, eye color, skin tone, and more. So cells usually use the two-step process of transcription and translation to read each gene and produce the string of amino acids that make up the protein that we've been talking about. So the basic rules uh, for translating a gene onto a protein are laid out in the universal genetic code that we will look at in a bit. But for an overview of transcription and translation, we'll just have a brief recap uh, of our previous lectures. Let's just look at this particular diagram. The transcription happens inside the nucleus. The cell's machinery copies the gene sequence into a messenger RNA, which is known as the mRNA. It's a molecule that is similar to the DNA. And like DNA, mRNA also has four nucleotide bases, but in mRNA, the base uracil replaces thiamine. Now, in the process of translation, which is the protein-making machinery called the ribosome, reads the mRNA sequence and translates it into protein. The ribosome starts at the sequence AUG, which is the start codon, which codes for methionine, and then reads three nucleotides at a time. Each three nucleotide codon specifies a particular amino acid, and the stop codons are UAA, UAG, and UGA, and these all tell the ribosome that the protein is now complete. So genes are best known for, uh, known as the instructions for building proteins. However, only a portion of the nucleotides in a gene actually code code for the protein itself. Other parts of the gene, like, you know, promoter and the other parts of the uh, gene provide additional information, including sequences that control when, where, and how much protein to make. So uh, the average human protein coding genes is about 
थ्री थाउजेंड लेटर्स लॉन्ग बट आर जीन्स कम इन वाइड रेंज ऑफ साइजेस जीन्स मेकअप सरप्राइजिंगली स्मॉल प्रपोर्शन ऑफ द ह्यूमन जीनो आर ट्वेंटी वन थाउजेंड और सो प्रोटीन फोर्डिंग जीन्स अकाउंट फॉर लेस दैन टू परसेंट ऑफ द जीनोम टोटल न्यूक्लियोटाइट्स अनदर स्मॉल चंक ऑफ द जीनोम कंटेन्स नॉन कोडिंग जीन्स विच कोड फॉर आर एन ए प्रोडक्ट्स लाइक ट्रांसफर एंड राइबोजोमल आर एन ए दैट आर नॉट ट्रांसलेटेड इन टू प्रोटीन्स बट द बल्क ऑफ द जीनोम डज इन कोड फॉर एनी प्रोडक्ट एट ऑल इट डज However, provide the necessary structure and organization that keeps our genes working properly. So, like I mentioned, that not every RNA uh, gets becomes a protein coding RNA. It's only the mRNA that those are protein codings. However, apart from mRNAs, we have non-coding RNAs, which then eventually, you know, code for other uh, regulatory non-coding RNAs, which are important housekeeping non-coding RNAs or long non-coding RNAs or short non-coding RNAs, which are all now known to help in regulation. So, RNA processing uh, happens in eukaryotes, like. it's not the exact uh, mrna that is you know de derived after the process of transcription there is a pre mrna that is formed and then there are uh, additional um, there are additional um, events that happen like you know at either end of the mrna are 5 prime and 3 prime untranslated regions and these utrs or the untranslated regions are assembled from what are considered to be exons even though they don't directly code for protein they do however contain sequences that are important in the protein building process for example many utrs contain sequences that help the you know ribosome in the next step of translation uh, to attach and detach influence how much protein is to be made and affect the life span of the mrna some also contain localization signals special tags um that keep an mrna within the specific area of the cell so utrs vary in size uh, from about 100 to a few thousand uh, nucleotides and the final uh, mature rna that happens after the process of uh, splicing because um there are different combinations of exons that you can we can put together and our cells can make different mrnas from the same gene this process is known as alternative splicing or just splicing uh, and that allows our cells to use the information in our genes in different ways for example for many proteins one version is stuck onto the cell membrane while another shorter version is free floating so thanks to these processes like alternative splicing and processing our cells can make many more proteins than we have uh, genes so more complex organisms like humans don't typically have more genes than simpler organisms rather our genomes have more sophisticated control mechanisms that allow genes to be used in many more ways leading to greater complexity so uh, the two additional uh, changes that happen uh, from the pre mrna to the mature mrna is the uh, addition of the 5 prime capping and the 3 prime polyadenylation tail that is added to the mature mrna and then this mrna is used for the process of translation so everybody must have written a secret message to one of your friends right so you must have used a code to keep the message hidden for instance you must have replaced the letters of the word with numbers or symbols following a particular set of rules in order for your friend to understand the message they would need to know the code and apply the same set of rules in reverse to decode it so decoding messages is also a key step in gene expression in which information from a gene is read out to build a protein and in this particular slide we'll take a closer look at the genetic code which allows the dna and rna sequences to be decoded into the amino acids of a protein so we've already looked at the process of translation so cells decode mrnas by reading their nucleotides in groups of 3 which are known as codons and there are few features of codons like most codons specify an amino acid as you can see in this particular table three stop codons uh, mark the end of the protein which are marked and highlighted in black and there is one start codon which is aug which marks as the beginning of the protein and also encodes the protein uh, amino acid known as methionine so codons in an mrna are read during um, translation beginning with a start codon and continuing until a stop codon is reached mrna codes are read from 5 prime to 3 prime and they specify the order of amino acids in a protein from n terminus methionine to c terminus so um 
basically translation involves reading this mrna nucleotides in group of 3 each group specifies an amino acid or provides a stop signal indicating that the translation is finished so um one more important uh, point to see is this the genetic code table so the full set of relationships between codons and amino acids or stop signals is known as the genetic code and this genetic code is often summarized in this particular table you know to reliably get uh, from an mrna to a protein we need one more concept to understand that is of a reading frame so reading frame determines how the mrna sequence is divided up into codons during translation that's a pretty um, abstract con concept so let's look at uh, an example to understand it better so the mrna below can uh, can encode three totally different proteins depending on the frame on which it is read so if we start from the first it is going to be a particular type of uh, protein while um, if we start from the second nucleotide in read in groups of 3 it is it is going to be a typical different type of protein so how does a cell know which of these proteins to make so the start codon is again the key a uh, key signal because translation begins at the start codon and continues in successive groups of 3 the position of the start codon ensures that the mrna is read in the correct frame so for example in the frame 3 uh, is the methionine so we know that this is the correct uh, frame that we have to uh, use so this this particular reading frame concept is also very important when we are looking at genes because we need to know that you know it starts with methionine and ends at a stop codon so how do you exactly you know find genes so in principle uh, one of the most important aspects of bioinformatics is identifying genes within a long dna sequence so until uh, you know the development of bioinformatics only way to locate genes along the chromosome was to study their behavior in vivo or in the organisms or isolate the dna and study it in a test tube that's called in vitro but nowadays bioinformatics allow scientists to make educated guesses about where genes are located simply by analyzing the sequence data using a computer which is now known as in silico so e you can either use dna sequences and uh, in principle locating genes should be easy so dna sequences that code for the protein begins with a three base aug that codes for the amino acid methionine and they end with one or more stop codons either taa tg uh, tga or tag but unfortunately finding genes isn't always so easy because sometimes the genes are either on the sense strand or the anti sense strand so let's consider that a dna sequence that contains a gene of interest the dna strand that codes for the protein is called the sense strand because its sequence reads the same as that of the messenger rna the other strand is called the anti sense strand and serves as a template for the rna fold during transcription then the third um point is the concept of open reading frames as we just discussed that a gene begins with a codon for the amino acid methionine and ends with one of the three stop codons the codons between the start and the stop signals code for various amino acids of the gene uh, of the gene product but do not include any of the three stop codons so when examining an unknown dna sequence one indication that it may be a part of the gene is the presence of an orf an orf is any stretch of dna that when transcribed into rna has no stop codon then there could be three different reading frames so a computer program can be used to check an unknown dna sequence uh, for orfs the program transcribes each dna strand into complementary rna sequence and then translates the rna sequence into amino acid sequence each dna strand can then be read in three different reading frames this means that the computer must perform six different translations for any given double stranded dna sequence now there could be regions of dna sequence that might be a part of the gene right so a presence of an orf does not guarantee that the dna sequence is a part of the gene we expect that just by chance there will be some long stretches of dna that do not contain stop codons and yet are not parts of genes likewise codons for methionine do not always mark the start of a gene sequence methionine codons are also found within the genes so nevertheless searching for orfs identifying regions of dna sequence that might be parts of the genes so these are all different ways to find uh, genes which were done traditionally or are also being used uh, with respect to um, 
using computer programs but how do you exactly find genes bioinformatically so there could be two scenarios one is where you already know what organism you are working for or what uh, is the interest organism that you need and you want to find out the list of all genes that are present in an organism so you would use a tool called as ncbi or a database known as ncbi and uh, there are different various sub databases within the uh, ncbi database where, which we could use to uh, firstly find out what genes are present in the organism secondly if we already have the name of the gene that we want or we are you know planning to work on then again we could use the gene database from ncbi and retrieve its gene sequence the second scenario could be that there is a given dna sequence which is uh, which you don't know belongs to which organism or which gene does it belong to and you want to find out what gene is it so you could use tools like blast uh, from again ncbi or ensemble and you know you could uh, use these three four um, informatic uh, tools to eventually find out what genes uh, you are working on so let's take an example so just to give a brief uh, overview about ncbi ncbi is national center for biotechnology information it is hosted at this particular server it's a searchable gene database and is available through the uh, national center for biotechnology information in association with the national library of medicine and national institute of health so although ncbi provides a vast amount of information related to biotechnology in this particular exercise we will focus on the database of genes and genomes so let's say that uh, we are interested in the uh, organism known as cow so i just went to ncbi website and uh, from the all databases tab we have selected the uh, database known as genome and we have typed in cow and then you press search so once you press search you get a particular tab in which you know it will give you everything about the organism it will give you an overview that its scientific name is bostorus it's 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 from cattle and what is the lineage how much sequence data is available for the particular organism how much is the median total length median protein count median gc content in that particular organism and also the publications related to genome sequencing projects or the genome sequence of the bostorus or any organism that for, for that matter that you put in uh, will be uh, shown over here so now if i if i am interested in any one particular gene or i am interested in knowing what are the genes present on each chromosome if you scroll below there is a chromosome tab and you can see the list of chromosomes that are present in the cow um, organism and if you just click on any one particular chromosome you will be redirected to this genome data viewer tab in which these uh, are the genes that are present in this particular organism and this is how uh, i have selected chromosome 4 so you could select chromosome 5 6 7 8 or whichever chromosome you are interested in to look at what genes are present on that particular chromosome in this particular organism so you could do this exercise for any organism of interest any virus any other favorite insect or any other fascinating creature that you come across provided that that uh, sequence is available on the ncbi's uh, database so you could use this ncbi to find out if the organism is known secondly if you have a favorite gene again you you know start at the ncbi homepage use the all databases tab to drop down menu to select gene the last time we selected genome now we are going to select gene because we already have our gene of interest and then you type a gene symbol so from the list above for example in this example i have used cyp27a1 gene in the search box and hit enter or search so by convention gene names are all caps for human genes and only the first letter is capitalized for other species so for example when you look at the ncbi uh, database you will see that if it's a human gene it will be Uh, present in all caps and if it's a mouse gene it will only have a single first letter which will be caps rest everything will be in small letters so similarly when i have selected the gene uh, drop down on the ncbi's uh, database and i have written cyp27 and pressed search i am landed up with this page where it you know gives me a brief overview about cyp27 what is the name of the gene gene at the cytochrome p450 family 27 sub family a member 1 and you know it is also known as cyp27 cpx is the disorder that is that it is involved in 
and it is also known as you know just cyp27 so like i like we mentioned that you know if it's a human gene you will have a gene id which will be in all caps whereas for other uh, species or other organisms it would be only the single letter that is caps so for example in mouse uh, you can see that only c uh, capital is there and for Uh, so on and so forth in all other organisms so if you click on this particular gene id it will tell you everything that is required for that particular gene you will be able to download the sequence of the gene and so on and so forth so if you want to do any other analysis using the sequence of the gene you know and you have the gene of interest you know where to go and how to you uh, download the sequence of the gene now next uh, scenario is when you have a given dna sequence but you don't know what gene it belongs to so let's imagine that there is a human gene that is linked to cancer and has been sequenced although you are aware of the portion of the dna sequence and that mutations in the sequence are linked to colon cancer you are unsure of which gene the mutation belongs to so you can check to see if genes match your sequence using the ensemble blast or the blast Two. So let's say that this is our gene. Uh, let, let's say this is the given DNA sequence that we have. So we will follow these steps. We will uh, go to the home page of Ensemble, click on the blast that is on the top of the page, enter the sequence that was uh, shown in the previous slide, and make sure that our species of interest chosen is Homo sapiens because we are working on humans, and then click run. So the default program in the Ensemble's blast tool is blast n, which means that you are going to blast it or you know you are going to locally align it against the genomic sequence n stands for nucleotide so uh, we will uh, do this and once we do this the results page is going to you know give us the gene name so the sequence matches to chromosome 3 base pairs uh, so uh, so and so and the e value that is uh, near 0 and percentage uh, similarity is 100 so this is a good hit and if we click on this particular locus from the result table to view the locus we will be able to explore known features in that that area and then we will have to explore this particular tab so the link from the blast result table has taken us to the location tab region in detailed view and the red box shows the position of the blast blat or the blast hit it matches to the exon of the mlh1 gene for numerous coding and non coding transcripts so this is how we will know that the sequence that we were working with is a part of the mlh1 gene according to the ensemble blast um, tool that we used so similarly any dna sequence that you have you could just run a simple blast by putting in the sequence uh, that you require uh, to be found that it matches to which particular gene and by uh, within 10 minutes you will be able to uh, you know know which gene is it or which is the part of the gene or is it a non coding region or a coding transcript and many many more informations that you can see so in the following uh, exercise we will be do we will be taking a uh, example from each of these scenarios and we will be working towards uh, you know doing it real life uh, right now i have pasted screenshots but we will do a step by step um, similar processes of whatever we have learned in the exercise to be followed in the next lecture so till then um, i hope these things were helpful and thank you for your time and attention and i'll see you in the next exercise